the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. This show is not intended for the politically correct or the close-minded. Enter at the risk of opening your eyes. You have been warned. Why does the media attack an issue? To get primetime ratings? In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. A moment comes when we step out from the old to the new and when the soul of a nation, long suppressed, finds utterance. Kind of catapult the propaganda. You are listening to Open Eyes with your host, Ira Robinson. From the normal to the paranormal, from government cover ups to the depths of our consciousness, we aim to explore all things. From the dawn of prehistory to current events, no topic is forbidden and nothing remains hidden. No more secrets. Open your eyes and open your mind to the fact that life as we know it is not as we have been taught. Join us at LateNightInTheMidlands.com or OpenEyesNetwork.com as we take this brief journey through the depths of the cosmos and explore what it really means to be human. Many peoples have sacrificed their liberties only to learn to their sorrow that deceit and mockery Poverty and tyranny are their reward. Whether you're online or offline, intercontinental or intergalactic, hello and welcome to Open Eyes. Today is July 27th, Monday, 2015. And I have a, a pretty good one in store for you guys tonight. I've taken a few days off and I'm fired up, liquored up and pissed off and ready to go here <laughs> uh, to, uh, to explain the situation. Basically, um, last week on Sunday, I was, I, I kind of woke up out of nowhere with a, a pretty good sore throat going on. A uh, bunch of sores like had appeared on my tongue and stuff. And I'm really definitely thinking that it's relating to the rain that we've had here of late 
And uh, whether that's something that was in the chemtrails bothering me or if it was maybe something in the um, in the uh, uh, mold in the air being generated or whatever the case may be, I don't know. Who knows? It's hard to tell. But uh, either way, it bothered me and it started to bother me like for the entire week. Basically, it stuck with me up until about, uh, well, about Friday to Saturday. And at that point, I started finally feeling a little bit better. Um, so last week, basically, it was kind of a, a weird week because um, I had Joe on for most of the week. And then I took Friday off and uh, kind of had the round table on Wednesday, which was a great episode. And I really liked how it turned out. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with the results of it. So um, in, a, in an extension of that, basically, tonight... I want to bring on a guest with me who is uh, somebody that you heard last week on that roundtable discussion. My daughter, uh, my eldest daughter, Bethany Robinson. Hello, Beth. Hello. <laughs> I'm glad to have you with me again tonight. Uh, the, the topics tonight, we're going to kind of talk about women's rights in general and how they're sort of uh, getting thrown to the wayside in the uh, wake of political correctness and, and some of the stupidity that's actually surrounding the people who are supporting the women's equality and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted to bring you on with it because while well, you have a lot of experience in this area and you have a, a very large passion to talk about this kind of thing. So I think that it's going to turn out to be a very interesting discussion tonight. <laughs> I sure hope so. Uh, plus, it helps me out a little bit to, uh, you know, kind of help me to um, avoid stressing my voice more. out too much uh, as opposed to me sitting here screaming and hollering for the next two hours. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, before we get to the main topic, I do have some news that I wanted to cover with you guys. And uh, I, I would like to get your opinions on some of this stuff as well. The, this first one, I don't know how much of an opinion you will have, but we shall see. Um Basically, in the wake of the uh, problems that are occurring between Palestine and Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, I always say Netanyahu, sorry, <laughs> wrote, about, uh, wrote about this subject on his Facebook profile over the weekend, uh, emphasizing that Jerusalem is going to remain united and a part of Israel. Now, the interesting kind of side note with this is that in relation to the Israeli Palestine uh, argument over Jerusalem, we here in the United States just within the past month and a half or so have now basically fallen under the uh, new way of doing things. The Supreme court essentially said that the president's office is above the law. A few years ago, there was an incident that occurred where um, a boy was born in Jerusalem. And according to the, um, the state department here in the United States, if somebody is born there in Jerusalem of American parents, they can be considered to be dual citizens of both America and Israel. OK, so they're born in Israel. They can be considered to be dual citizenship. Um, however, when a, a person is then born in Jerusalem, because there is the argument over who owns Jerusalem, the uh, the parents um, have to basically mark that it was Jerusalem that they were born in. OK, so they can't claim that they were born in Israel. They have to claim that they were born in Jerusalem. So it's kind of considered almost like the Vatican in relation to, um, you know, its city state status. Vatican City is a nation unto itself. Jerusalem is sort of that same way. It's considered neutral territory, essentially. So does all that make sense? Yes. OK, so uh, when this boy was born. His parents marked down that he was born in Israel, but they knew that he was born in um, Jerusalem. So they have actually taken the case all the way to the Supreme Court to try to fight to uh, name this child being born in Israel. Now, the Supreme Court basically has sided with 
the uh, executive branch, in other words, President Obama's administration, saying that uh, the president can supersede anything that Congress has said is possible to do. Congress passed a, passed a law about uh, four years ago, I believe it was, saying that those who were born in Jerusalem can choose which one they want to do. Mm-hmm. So now, through the Supreme Court, the executive branch is essentially above the law. If he wants to choose to ignore that law, he can do so. So lovely, right? Exactly. So in in regards to the uh, issues with Palestine and and Israel um, and him saying that they're going to remain united and a part of Israel, here's a couple of interesting things that I have as well. The United Nations has come out with resolution after resolution over the years condemning Israel for their um, role that they're playing in regards to Jerusalem. United, uh, United Nations Resolution 127 said that they recommend Israel suspend its no man's zone in, in Jerusalem. The resolution number 162 urges Israel to comply with UN decisions. Uh, 237 urges Israel to allow the return of new 1967 Palestinian refugees. Number 250 calls on Israel to refrain from holding military parades in Jerusalem. 251 deeply deplores Israeli uh, military parades in Jerusalem in defiance of resolution number 250. On and on and on, all the way up to... Let me see here. Resolution number 672, condemning Israel for violence against Palestine, uh, Palestinians at the Haram al-Sharif Temple Mount. Uh, 608, they deeper, deeply regret that Israel has defied the United Nations and deported Palestinian civilians, on and on and on. So here's, here's the issue. What good are they doing? Right. We're calling on these resolutions to condemn them and, oh, they've been bad boys and here's a slap on the wrist over and over. Well, if anybody else was to do something like this, they'd have uh, economic sanctions put against them, military sanctions put against them, uh, war declared on and on and on, right? Yep. But when it comes to Israel and Palestine fighting over Jerusalem, everybody takes a hands-off approach. To me, it's stupid, you know? It really is. It's it's senseless to me. So anyways, I just wanted to bring that information out to everybody. What are your thoughts on that? What, where do you side with it? I mean, the first thing I have to say, because of the fact that you uh, had said about the executive branch being above the law, just what is the point of even having a Congress if the executive branch is get above the law? <laughs> Exactly my point. <laughs> exactly <laughs> my point. It is. It's absolutely stupid. The the fact that they uh, anything that they do, if they if they pass a law or they pass a regulation or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. Obama can eliminate it under executive action. Yep. You know, just by the signing of the little pen on his executive order, it's gone. It's no longer mm-hmm. functional. Even though the Congress is supposed to be the voice of the people and it's not just one person. That's why it's called the legislative branch. It's called that exactly. for a reason. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name of the legislative branch for whatever reason. Yeah. So it's just. <laughs> well, you have the legislative, which makes the laws. You have the yeah, executive, the which enforces and the... the laws and the judicial, which judges whether or not the laws are constitutional or not. And that's the functions of the three. That's all that they do. So, you know, the fact that the executive literally writes laws out of out of the out of its butt Mm -hmm. is is a big problem here in America. Now, it's a good, good pointer to the reason why America at this point is dead. Exactly. We're no longer a constitutional republic. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Exactly. We're no longer a constitutional republic. We are a corporatocracy at this point. Yep. And Obama just happened, or, you know, the president, whatever president happens to be in. But Obama at this point is the CEO of the corporation, basically. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. (laughs) 
Okay, so let's uh, uh, another mess basically that that is coming up. And this one's gonna, I think, be pretty interesting. I'm I'm curious to see what comes about with this uh, story. A group is planning to unveil an eight foot tall bronze statue featuring a goat headed Satan in Detroit during a gathering that's being billed as the largest public satanic ceremony in history. The satanic temple said on Saturday that the private event will be open only to people with tickets, $25 each invitations to the quote unquote unveiling summoned guests to prepare for a night of chaos, noise and debauchery. Come dance with the devil and experience history in the making. The event location is not being announced publicly and it's known only to those who have tickets. So would you go to this uh, satanic unveiling? No. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? Because I'm not a Satanist. Oh, okay. But (laughs) that's despite what everybody else might try to claim about you, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, I'll have people telling me that because I'm a pagan, I worship Satan. Well, exactly. That's not how it works. Yes. Oh, that drives me nuts. Whenever I hear anybody trying to say that a pagan worship Satan, I'm like, you really don't understand what being a pagan really is, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You kind of don't understand the concept. Right. Frankly, uh, if if you really want to take a look at the actions of most people out there who follow the different religions, I would say that that about two thirds of the different uh, religious people that are out there are actually essentially worshiping Satan already because, (laughs) you know, they, they obviously are doing everything satanic. Um, you know, the average person who, who professes to be a Christian does absolutely nothing that Christ said to do, such as taking care of the poor. Um, like I thought earlier saying homosexuality is a, what was it? A cause for death death worthy, a, a death worthy sin. Yep. Yeah. No, that that's not being Christian. <laughs> that's uh, that that's being that's being satanic right there if you want to go with the definition that everybody tries to claim Satan okay. has, you know. Although we know the truth. I mean, I I've told you this before and you've heard it on my show before about the truth about what Satan is and what Lucifer is <laughs> and all all that stuff, you know. I wouldn't go to this myself just because I don't like crowds. So yeah, I don't either. <laughs> I'm kind of antisocial. <laughs> I was at a party yesterday and I felt so like terrible. Cause I was like in the house where everyone was outside and I was just like, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> your, your introvert came out, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, it, it, to me, I guess uh, I, I could see the the fact that this statue being there is going to cause a lot of issues. But you know, the the fact is, you you know that this is being done tongue in cheek, and anybody yep. that is of the average intelligence is going to realize this is being done as a spit in the face to those who profess to be Christian. Um, yep. And that's what it's designed to do. I mean, that's what the whole satanic. Uh, religion, you know, the, the satanic temple, the Satan, the satanic Bible, all, all of that stuff was formed to spit in the face of Christianity, which they thought at the time that this was being written and established, uh, were oppressive and, and on and on and on. So they did this as a way to counter balance that stuff. So, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, see, I personally would rather them put up a statue of the flying spaghetti monster, but that might just be me. (laughs) That's funny. I was going to get to that, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, in in Oklahoma, where they uh, eliminated the Ten Commandments from being out in the front of a courthouse. um, Which, by the way, is still there. Right. Uh, They were trying to also say, well, if these are going to be there, then we'd like to build, you know, a statue. A statue of Satan. We'd like to build um, a dedication or a memorial to the flying spaghetti monster, you know, on and on and on. And there's really no reason why you shouldn't. I mean, if you're going to have one religious symbol, then you should be able to have all of the religious symbols. Well, during Christmas time, it's like everywhere. Like, oh, okay. You say happy holidays, but everything is Christmas. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So I call bull. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yep. Yep, exactly. When but Christmas uh, to begin with is a pagan holiday anyway. So, well, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And I'm going to have you on around the holiday season so we can go into that <laughs> subject for sure because, man, it really is. It, there's no denying it. And anybody well, I mean, that does ago deny it. It was Christmas it, in July, so I guess it kind of works. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's it's not just pagan, but it's it's also uh, corporate. You know, that's that's what Christmas basically has become. Uh, it really right. has. Um. Anyway, so yeah, we'll we'll definitely get into that when the uh, the time comes around in a couple of months. Um, when it comes to this kind of stuff, though, I I support people that want to do this kind of thing because again, if you're going to have the um, one religion being nodded to, mm-hmm. you have to give fair use. Basically, you have to give fair play to allow all of them to do it. I mean, okay. it, you know, if you just want to look at at the statistics here in America, for instance, we have, yes, a large Christian population or, again, those who profess to be Christian. And you notice I keep using that because it's really important to do so. Right. Um, we also have a lot, though, who are professing to be Muslim. We have a lot who profess to be Buddhist and Hindu and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's not just a Christian nation, despite what many people out there who are Christian try to claim. It really is not. And the uh, Treaty of Tripoli proves that beyond a shadow right. of a doubt. Uh, but anyways, I digress. As far <laughs> as this statue is concerned, I'm, I say I'll go for it. Hey, no problem. I have no that. issue with it. Mazel tov. <laughs> <laughs> or Abarat or whatever it is that you want to say. As you. Right, I, don't, I don't quite know what your thing is, but go for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of, uh, of different types of discrimination, uh, another one that I ran across that's kind of related to that one is uh, the fact that the world's first non-white modeling agency, which claims to be a true celebration of diversity, uh, is now basically opening. So, okay, so so their tagline is that it's a true celebration of diversity, but if you're going to prevent or or ignore one big section of things that's that's kind, kind of the of opposite diversity <laughs> that's kind of the opposite of diversity um this reminds me of of the uh story that i brought out i guess it was about two months ago now on open eyes of a uh two university students who were journalists that went into a public forum a, a public meeting that was taking place. The meeting was done with um, all African Americans and they were discussing um, like white privilege and so on and so forth. And the journalists, these two journalists went into the meeting, you know, to, to take notes and, you know, say, Hey, you know, we had this meeting and blah, blah, blah. Well, these two journalists were white. They were kicked out by these people because they uh, did not want to feel oppressed. Mm-hmm. By the, by the white people being there, they didn't want to feel like they had to hold themselves back from speaking. Right. And See, it just they, reminds me of the uh, sorry. <laughs> well, and I was just going to say, and the, and then they came out saying that it was it, they did it to to help promote you know diversity and and to make sure that. Uh, they weren't being discriminated against and so on and so forth. And it's like, well, you just discriminated against somebody in your anti-discrimination act. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was, I was going to say that one story that we talked about uh, probably two weeks ago about the uh, white only or the white privilege uh, education at that one school. Oh yeah, the the white people studies basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about the uh everything from Ferguson to to whatever. Charleston and yeah, exactly. And it was yeah, oh gosh. I mean, it's just crazy the the way that people, you know, think these days. And we're going to get into some of that weird stuff too when it comes to the feminist issue because mm-hmm. it's just as prevalent on that issue as well. It just makes no sense. The line of this whole show is just like we're all human. Get over it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I I think if if I was to to say that there was any kind of uh, tagline that my show 
would have, you know, kind of overall is that we're all still learning and we just need to get over ourselves so that we can learn, you know, <laughs> it's really what it all comes down to. Indeed. So, uh, I have one more here, I think, uh, maybe two, um, Okay, President Obama pledged to use his last 18 months in office to work on gun control, calling it the one area where he feels that he's the most frustrated and most stymied. In a quote from him uh, in an interview with the BBC, he said, If you ask me where has been one area where I feel that I've been the most frustrated and the most stymied, it's the fact that the United States of America is the one advanced nation on Earth in which we do not have sufficient common sense gun safety laws, even in the face of repeated mass killings. And if you look at the number of Americans killed since 9-11 by terrorism, it's less than 100. But if you look at the number that have been killed by gun violence, it's in the tens of thousands. For us not to be able to resolve that issue has been something that is distressing, but it is not something that I intend to stop working on in the remaining 18 months. So, (laughs) this is obviously in the wake of the mass shooting last week in the movie theater, which happened in, in Louisiana. Um, let me, let me speak here real quick about a couple of things that I found in relation to that little incident. Shall I? Shall you? <laughs> okay. So the, uh, shooting happened at the grand theater 16 and it happened on July 23rd, 2015. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So grand theater 16, right? Mm-hmm. In Aurora on July 20th, of 2012, the shooting that happened there happened at the century 16 theater. Mm-hmm. So we have the grand theater 16 and the century 16. We have July 20th, 2012, July 23rd, 2015. So you add three numbers to, you know, the number three to each of those, uh, dates. And you've got, you know, from July 20th, 2012, add three, you've got July 23rd, 2015. And lo and behold, it was three years later. How interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have in the Aurora shooting, it was James Holmes. So Holmes was his last name, right? Right. The last name of this guy that uh, just did the Louisiana shooting, last name of Hauser. Mm-hmm. So we have House and Holmes. Yep. Both of them were, quote unquote, lone white males. Um, both of them happened 20 minutes into the films that they were watching. So in Aurora, it was 20 minutes into the Batman film. Right. Quote from the, the, uh, people, the witnesses during that time period said about 20 minutes into the film, he left the building through an emergency exit door, which he propped open with a plastic tablecloth holder. Now this guy, he opened fire about 20 minutes into the film train wreck. This is the universe Mm -hmm. at work. Right. This is, this is the not coincidental things. <laughs> so, you know, when yeah. I first heard about this whole shooting, the moment I read the title, I didn't even read the first article I saw. I was just like, well, it looks like that's a carbon copy. <laughs> it is indeed. It is indeed. So, um, I have a, a little bit of information as well that I'd like to add into this. Mm -hmm. Um, In 2013, Pew Research did a study that said that 37% of households have an adult who own a gun. 24% said that they owned a gun and 13% said that someone else in their household did. There are about 319 million people in the United States. So that means that there are about 118 million gun owners in this nation right now. Okay. Uh Okay. So according to uh, statistical information, there have been about 69 mass shootings in the last 30 years. Um, In this, in, in the, uh, in another research, basically you can go up to about 78 mass shooter incidents that have occurred. Okay. Mm -hmm. Over the, the last 30 years during that, that time period, during those mass shootings, 
they can be attributed to having about 569 people killed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 78 incidents, right? Mm -hmm. Out of 118 million gun owners. That means that point zero 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 seven percent of gun owning people are potential mass murderers. Right. And that's out of a 30 year total, a 30 year statistic. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's uh, I think proof positive that the propaganda that's put out regarding this whole gun control mass shooting deal. You can write it off. I mean, hello. <laughs> I'd like to see how many of those mass shootings occurred in the last 10 years, but <laughs> um, in the last 10 years, it's probably been about, uh, let me see here. I think if I, if I'm remembering correctly, probably about 12 or so right. have been just in the past, you know, since about the year 2000 or so. Right. Um, so again, let, let's take another number here. I'm going to give you another number here. 10,076. Okay. Okay. So 569 people killed in mass shooting incidents in the past 30 years. Right. 10,076. According to MADD or MAD, that's the number of people killed during drunk driving car crashes in one year alone. Mm -hmm. 2013. In fact, every day in America, 28 people die in drunk driving crashes every single day. Yeah. So ban cars, ban alcohol. Exactly. We should ban bathtubs too, because 341 people have died from drowning and submersion while in or falling into bathtubs every year. <laughs> And floors. We need to ban floors, too, because 565 people die each year from slipping, tripping, or falling. I have a feeling that's going to be the way I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's that's um, one one other thing that I'll that I'll toss in here and then we'll take a break real fast. But one other thing that I can toss into this as well is that in regards to all of this stuff that's going on with the guns and on and on and on. Not one politician is talking about taking guns away from criminals. It's only mm -hmm. taking guns away from those who legally own guns and don't use them to commit crimes. Right. And tossed into there as well. We are in the United States. Fourth from the top. In other words, number four mm -hmm. in the amount of violent gun crimes committed out of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So number four out of the world, I'm sorry. Right. Number three out of the world. Sorry. Number three out <laughs> of the world. So we're, th we're in third place as far as the amount of deaths by guns out of everybody in the world. But, Indeed. but if you take out Washington, DC, Chicago, New York, and, um, Trying to Detroit. remember. Detroit sounds right. <laughs> Might be Detroit. One other city. Um, Either Detroit or Los Angeles. <laughs> it, it's slipping right off the top of my head for some reason, and I, and I don't know why. Anyways, if you eliminate those four cities from the list of United States cities, right, mm -hmm. we actually drop to number three from the bottom of the list. Right. So it is only those four cities that are the most prevalent problems mm -hmm. and those four cities have the strictest gun control laws out of anywhere in the nation. Mm -hmm. So gun control does not work. Yeah. It has been proven over and over and over again. The only reason why gun control is such a big issue and why they make such a big thing of it is because without the guns, we're done. Right. The guns are the only things that are keeping us from being taken over 100%. The only thing I have in to say with the gun control laws is that I feel like it should be just a teensy weensy bit harder. Like the gun show loophole, 
that should be gone. I don't disagree with you. I, I, I honestly don't disagree with you. Um, there should be some things in place to keep crazy from getting guns. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree with that, but the way that they try to, to market gun control right. is way beyond, <laughs> you know, it goes way beyond. They want to just take them away, right. which is not what we need. We right. need it stricter, but not gone. Right. Exactly. There's a big difference between the two. So yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a break here real quick. And when we come back, I have maybe one more news story for you, and then we'll get into the the topic of discussion for the evening. And hopefully it gets pretty interesting for all of you guys out there. Uh, stick around with us. You are listening to myself, Ira Robinson, and my uh, eldest, who is uh, <laughs> who is uh, a wonderful addition to tonight's show, Bethany Robinson. Uh, hang around with us. We'll be back in just a few minutes. The LNM Radio Network and Late Night in the Midlands depends on you, the listener. Without you, there would be no us. So help us continue to bring you the best guests with the best information and subscribe today. Information on becoming an LNM subscriber can be found at the top of LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Just click the About Subscriptions tab and become part of the family while helping the truth stay alive. And while you're at it, maybe subscriptions aren't for you. A one-time donation helps as well. Click that donate button on the right side of LateNightInTheMidlands.com and help us help you. Have you ever heard of Audible? Audible is a website with hundreds of thousands of audiobooks. They're all high quality, easy to listen to, and best of all, if you take advantage of a special deal that we've worked out for you, you can get one for free. That's right, a free audiobook of your choice in any genre simply by going to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and signing up for the free trial. It's simple to do and it would support the shows that we bring to you and hey, you get a free book out of the whole thing. So why not take advantage of it today? Go to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and sign up for the trial. The new priests are the purveyors of the now. The, if you don't get this right now, you are doomed mindset that is surrounding us was created by these men in black, these dark masters, these puppet masters that control the strings. They, the ones with the real knowledge of how reality works, those that know and understand the origins of us. Those are the ones controlling the masses through the media, through the politics, through everything that causes us to be divided, losing the sense of what is really real. That reality is that we are all connected, all together in this thought experiment that the universe is running. We are intimately connected together, forever traveling through the universe at light speed. We're all breathing the same air. The same energies pass through us. The same emotions that you feel are the same emotions that I feel. We are all one. Stop being divided by them. Stop letting the priests of chaos and blight rule you. Stop believing the lies.
Welcome back to Open Eyes. My name is Ira Robinson, and I want to thank you guys for sticking around through that break. I definitely appreciate it. Tonight, uh, you are listening to myself and uh, Bethany Robinson having a discussion about some uh, various current events so far. And uh, I have a couple of other bits of news for you before we want to get into the main uh entree for the evening, the main course, so to speak. And uh, speaking of of main courses and <laughs> cooking and all that kind of good stuff, there was a, a story that I ran across that, I don't know, it, it kind of got my goat. It, it drove me nuts, to say the least. Me? No way. <laughs> <laughs> a, uh, a Florida man was confronted by a county environmental specialist this week. And was absurdly ordered to keep the smell of his barbecue from leaving his property. I kid you not with this. <laughs> so there's a video of the incident, and um, I'll make sure to put it on to my uh, uh, show notes for this show so that you guys can see it. This is a a crazy, crazy situation. The uh, it was it was put up on Facebook by uh, homeowner Scotty Jordan. And it shows Pinellas County Environmental Specialist Joe Graham discussing the alleged infraction with Jordan and his friends after a nearby neighbor alerted the county. He said, "Um, I'm only here because of the odor. I'm only here because of the smoke. During the conversation, Graham asserts that the uh, men are in violation of a local rule that uh, bans the smell of barbecue from crossing over one's property line. He said, I can smell it again right now, but I'm on your property, so you're allowed to have it smell on your property. So that doesn't count. But when I'm on the street, that's when it counts. So the uh, the cameraman asks Graham how the group, or anyone for that matter, would be able to control where the odor travels. They said, uh, so we're supposed to control the smoke and the wind and where it's blowing it? And uh, Graham goes on to suggest that the group move their barbecue on a regular basis in conjunction with wind patterns or purchase a specialized version designed to minimize smoke. <sighs> so I wonder um, if this man has that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, this, uh, this kind of goes right into an effort that's, that's been put forward by the EPA over the past few years where they're trying really hard to control like barbecue grills and wood stoves and that kind of thing under the auspices of reducing pollution. Um, They want to do everything that they can do to prevent pollution from escaping into the air. And okay, well the odors of your cooking. is not going to ruin the ozone. No, 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 (laughs) not at all. Well, I don't know though. I don't know. The climate scientists, they claim that the, the, uh, the lesser dryest, if I remember correctly, is the name of it. Um, the warming period that took place during the Dark Ages was caused by too many people lighting campfires. Well, I mean, it's all the cow farts, don't you know? Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. It, it's it's the SUVs combined with the cow farts. It's the two put okay, together gotcha. that, that are causing the problem. No, it, it's... It doesn't have anything to do with the great big flaming ball of gas that's in the sky that's constantly putting out uh, hot radiation <laughs> into the atmosphere. No, no, no. Nothing to do with that thing at all. Uh, people, you know? Come on. You know, the never mind. <laughs> and anybody that doesn't enjoy the smell of a barbecue, I have no respect for. Come on. Right? right? Exactly. <laughs> a good I barbecue. I almost understand with vegetarians, but not even then, because you can grill some really nice veggie burgers. You got it. You got it. Well, I haven't had any myself, but I'm veggie sure. Veggie burgers are delicious. <laughs> I'm sure there's something fofu out there that can <laughs> that can be satisfying for some people. Well, you know, that was all I lived off of for five years. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is true. This is true. Uh, and I changed you when you came back and lived. Um, anyways, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was changed before that. Um, but you know, I, seriously, I I don't I don't get why people are so nosy about stupid crap like this. But when a kid is being abused or something along those lines, you know, you got like your neighborhood filled with people selling drugs and so on and so forth. Yeah, that gets ignored. But but light up a barbecue and people freak the hell out. Come on. 
Well, I like the fact that this happened in Florida. And, you know, there's that one Twitter account that's like the the superhero Florida man. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Florida is is weird. You know, I mean, I don't know. There's so much that goes on in Florida. I mean, it's God's waiting room to begin with. But, you know, there's so much that goes on in Florida that just is insane. Why do people put up with half the crap that goes on down there? I have no idea. You know, you've got you've got them literally making homelessness illegal. They make it illegal to feed the homeless like they're some kind of pigeons or something. You know, uh, arresting a 90 year old guy for going out and feeding the homeless. And, you know, come I mean, on. all it is is people wanting to party and old people. That's Florida for you. It's pretty much Florida in in a nutshell right there. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't get why people just put up with half the crap that some of these cities come up with, you know, again, the, the homelessness thing alone is enough to, to drive me to distraction, you know? No offense to anyone that lives in California or Florida, but honestly, they just need to both have an earthquake and go the f*** away. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now I gotta edit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the other story that I had for you guys out there was um, in regards to the the Queen. Her, 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 her nibs herself. Uh, Here's Queen. Yep. Buckingham Palace is considering taking legal action over leaked footage that shows the Queen as a child performing a Nazi salute with her family. The palace has launched an inquiry into how the 17 second black and white film came into the hands of the Sun newspaper. It shows the Queen, aged six or seven, join Queen Mother and her uncle Prince Edward in raising an arm in salute as she played alongside her younger sister, Princess Margaret. This is another we decide what the symbol mean moment. <laughs> Not unlike the uh, the big deal over the Confederate flag, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the fact is that, look, I mean, she did it right. There's Mm -hmm. no denying it. So instead of dealing with the problem of explaining, why did you do it? No, we're going to go after who leaked the photos, you know? Right. (laughs) That's what the problem is. The problem isn't that she did it. The problem is that somebody leaked it. Right. It's just like with the whole Edward Snowden and the WikiLeaks stuff and all that kind of stuff. You know, the, people, they freak out over the fact that the stuff was leaked instead of paying attention to the stuff that's in the documents, you know, which right. are where the problem is. Uh, so, you know, in regards to this, I, I guess. Also, sorry. Huh? Also, the age of the Internet, everything that you have ever done has a chance to be leaked. Well, yeah, exactly. That that was one thing that I was trying to get out when people were tripping out over the uh, different actresses and, and stars that had their nude photos leaked off of their phones and all this kind of stuff, you know? And people were saying, okay, well, if you look at it, that's causing rape and on and on and on, you know? And it's like, okay, I understand you're mad, but if you didn't want it leaked to begin with, don't do it to begin with and certainly don't put it on your phone, which can be hacked. Well, here's my thing with it. Like, yes, I understand. It sucks your pictures of your naked body got leaked. I understand that's a private moment for you and whoever you sent it to. However, it is not rape. Somebody leaked the photos. Yes, they were taking advantage of the fact that they found it. But wouldn't you? (laughs) Yeah. It just, it makes no sense to me, you know, again, how they will kick in the one direction, but totally neglect the other, you know, um, you know, in regards to the Nazi salute too, here's, here's one thing that most people don't think of. Why is it that when, you know, I guess why, why would it be considered to be a Nazi salute to begin with in Mm -hmm. the 1930s, American children made the exact same gesture towards the American flag. Right. You know, and still did actually even up into, uh, the early 1940s before we started into World War II. Right. So up until that point in time, that was the gesture that was done. It was it was the salute in in uh, ob- obeisance to the American flag. 
So here's, here's the thing. Okay. In, in 1933, world war two was still six years away. Mm -hmm. Hitler had just started his revival of Germany's economy. It was, um, it was actually called the German miracle. And it worked so well, actually, that Hitler became Time Magazine's Man of the Year in 1938. Mm -hmm. Most people forget that fact. Right. In 1930, Germany looked really, really good, (laughs) you know, (laughs) to everybody. But, but behind the scenes in Britain and the United States, bankers realized that the German miracle was based on Hitler shutting down the private central bank that had been imposed on Germany by the Treaty of Versailles at the end of World War I. Right. They were also, at that point, too, starting to issue their own currency, which actually freed the German people from the debt that was getting paid into the private bankers' bank accounts. Mm -hmm. So as a result, Germany was actually going to be a very powerful economic powerhouse. So the private bankers, you know, the private centralized bankers, they knew that they were going to basically no longer be enslaved to these private banks like the federal federal reserve. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, And they started to worry that people of other nations would see how well Germany was actually doing and want to free themselves of that same private banking system, too. So in 1933, um, different private central bankers organized a global boycott against Germany, trying to stop them, you know, trying to stop basically Hitler who thought that he could run a country by creating his own money, which is actually Mm -hmm. the same reason why the private bankers supported um, the Confederacy because they wanted to see Lincoln's greenbacks eliminated. Right. Okay. Because they weren't supported by the central banks either. That was what the whole reason for the Civil War, the whole kit and caboodle of it was over Lincoln's greenbacks. Among other things, too. It was not about slavery, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was not about slavery. In, um, in 1936, Winston Churchill started to call for a new war with Germany in different uh, broadcasts that he was doing on the radio. And all that was really needed was to provoke Germany into an overt move that could be used to blame Germany for the war. Right. Um, just like how it had actually been made the villain in world war one as well, which was actually between Austria, Hungary and Serbia. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, the, the German people, basically they took the fall twice because they had uprised themselves twice. Um, which is, I think is part of the reason why you don't see anybody calling for anything like that in Germany (laughs) today. Now, again, let me let me make clear here, okay? I'm not saying that Hitler was doing the right thing by putting everybody into concentration camps and so on and so forth. He went the complete wrong direction in everything. But until actually the start of the war, until actually the the um him burning the Reichstag, which was his deal, you know, that was kind of one of the first really uh well known false flag events to occur. Right. Um that was what started the call for war. So by that point in time, basically he, he had lost his nut. Okay. But before that period in time, he was actually a pretty decent leader and actually was leading Germany into a very prosperous way of being. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, which is why again, so many people followed him to begin with. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Most people, they did not, um, they they were they were actually really good, really glad to have Hitler there because he brought back a big sense of pride to them which they had lost at the end of World War 1. Yep. So, you know, after that uh 20 year period of time, he he had brought 
you know, quite a bit of pride back into the nation. So, yeah, of course, people were going to, you know, follow him. He was a very charismatic leader. There mm -hmm. was no reason not to follow him at that time. But then, you know, again, the nut got lost. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the problem, I think, when it comes to um, the Hitler problem is that most people don't take into consideration the uh, other people that were pushing him as well. Again, mm -hmm. not saying that he was in any way, shape or form good, but that um, there were other mitigating factors to everything that was there, such as the Vatican whispering into his ear that the Jews needed to be eliminated because the Vatican can't stand the Jews. Yep. Okay. So they were doing everything that they could do to push him into eliminating the Jews. And that was where basically he really started getting the, the feather up his butt to start evicting out the Jews. And when the Jews would not evict themselves, that's when the concentration camp started to open and everything kind of fell into place from there. And from there, um, like right during that period of time as well, a lot of other uh, people started to have interactions with him and started pushing him into the directions of the occult. Mm -hmm. And so if you start looking into like the truth of World War II German history, you'll see that there was this big push towards the occultic um, type of thing by Hitler. He had basically mm -hmm. one division, you know, one half of his troops were dedicated to fighting the war while the other half was busy trying to locate different relics and, and uh, reliquaries and, and, uh, books and on and on and on, you know, trying to basically gather as much occultic material together for what purpose? Well I don't as, know. Huh? As well as also the fact that they had many people stationed in the concentration camps that were doing experiments towards the occult. Right. Exactly. That was, that was a big part of the reason why those concentration camps were there was as a point of experimentation, not just with the occult, but also with, uh, you know, going into, into genetics and different medical things and on and on and on. I mean, right. horrific stuff, you know, to say the least, but that was kind of, again, the reason for being with regards to, um, Germany during that period of time. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, it really all started just like the civil war did in relation to money. Mm hmm. So the fact that the getting back to the, the story here, the fact that the queen was giving a salute much in the same way that the American students were doing and, and that the um, Germans were doing and on and on and on. It's not really to me that big of a deal. I don't see yeah. it being, you know, such a, a her, you know, she was not um, dedicating herself to Nazi Germany or anything along those yeah. lines by that period in time, it was actually not even Nazi Germany. It was, it was at that point, again, the quote unquote German miracle going on right. at that point. So yeah, it's just a weird um, issue, but I, I've seen I mean, a lot of people talking about it and I just kind of wanted to make sure that people understood uh, the side truth of all of it. You know, it's a big deal to us now because of the fact that, it is a symbol to most people of the Nazis and how it's a terrible, terrible thing in our history. But it's really not about that then. Right. Exactly. It's the hindsight thing. Yes, we understand that now, but you know, in hindsight is the only reason why we understand that. So <laughs> uh, again, it, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's like during the 1950s, you know, the, the, at that point in time, the words under God was added to the pledge of allegiance, but it mm -hmm. didn't exist in the pledge of allegiance before that point in time. And it was only put into to position to, uh, counteract the quote unquote godless communists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the godless commies, um, that was the whole reason why it was put there. So the, uh, hindsight to that we can see now how people act when it comes to the pledge of allegiance i see on facebook all the time you know people um putting out Support the different memes you say under god during the 
I do believe it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it and it just it kind of drives me a little nuts because it's like, okay, are you meaning the Pledge of Allegiance before or after the 1950s? And are you <laughs> meaning the the one that was put out simply as propaganda to brainwash people into fighting against the godless commies? I do also have to say, um, in regards to the whole Nazi thing, I am sick and tired. I know you're going to call them feminazis, and it's going to <laughs> actually, me all. Actually, no, no, I, I'm I'm tending not to call them uh, feminazis anymore. I'm calling them rad femmes at this point. So thank you. Because <laughs> every time that I hear somebody call somebody else a Nazi because of the fact that they don't di- that they disagree with them, it's driving me insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, also, no, I uh, also the pe- fact that people are getting angry at me for being a socialist. The Nazis were called socialists just because it sounded good. Well, okay, socialism, the um the idea of socialism at its core, there actually is not really anything quote unquote wrong with it, and I'm probably well, going to yeah. get blasted for that, but uh, I understand the reason for it there. Um, I tend to be more towards the idea of a free market kind of a thinking um, mm-hmm. simply because of the fact that if you run a business, if you have a business, if you have something that you're doing as your, you know, life, right, your career, um, you have to work hard to get it to survive. You know, I, I've been there. I, I've run my own businesses before. If you run a bad business, it's going to close, you know. That's just simply how it is. Um, so I'm, I'm like I said, I'm kind of more of a, a free market kind of a thinker as opposed to a socialist. But I understand the ideas behind socialism. Right. Um, well, I was just meaning the fact that a lot of people, because of the fact that I do support social programs adamantly, do call me a socialist. Right. But and see, I have. No problem with that. <laughs> well, there's a, there's also, though, too, a big difference between social programs and socialism, a complete vast difference. And people really need to get that through their heads. You know, that they're, they're not one in the same <laughs> in any way, shape mm-hmm. or form. So, yeah, trust me, I definitely understand where you're coming from with that. So um, that was basically the news stories that I had to bring to this episode. And I know this uh, this news segment was a lot longer than what we usually go with the news. But, hey, that's what I get for taking, what, six days off in a row. So <laughs> lots of stuff happens. <laughs> let's we go ahead. Get to <laughs> yeah, not not even. Um, let's go ahead and hit a break here real quick. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and get into the feminist agenda and the rights of women and the fact that they seem to be kind of going the way of the dodo at this point in time, you know, or at least that's what they're trying to do. So um, stick around with us, folks. You're listening to Open Eyes, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network is deeply devoted to you, the listener. We feel it is necessary to bring you all of the information that you can use in your life. Each and every day, you will find something to listen to here. And whether you come away from the shows informed, inspired, or entertained, it is our passion. We don't bow to corporations, and we don't have handlers to tell us what not to talk about. We bring you everything. Late Night in the Midlands, however, is fully listener-supported. We need your help to stay on the air and to make sure that we get the bills paid. We need your help to keep the truth alive. If you feel that you have gotten anything out of Late Night in the Midlands, we would appreciate your support. You can become a subscriber and help us out on a monthly basis, or if you'd like, a one-time donation is fully appreciated as well. Every year, 
the average household in America spends over $3,000 on entertainment alone. If you could help us with just a tiny fraction of that amount, you would make all of the difference. Go to LateNightInTheMidlands.com and click on the subscribe button. Thank you, and as always, keep yourself informed. So I want to challenge you all about what you think you know. You know. You think that you're a human being and you know the way the world works, but I'm here to burst that bubble. All of us are energy. A human being is a very complex pattern of energy. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, how much you can take and keep moving forward. Much more important to teach children to question what they read. Children should be taught to question everything. Children should be taught to question authority. Parents never teach their children to question authority because parents are authority figures themselves. Like it or not, for the moment, the earth is where we make our stand. It's just a ride. And we can change it anytime we want. It's only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now between fear and love. Because to be awoken means you're doing the work here to change this world right here in the now where you're at now. From where you're at now. The eyes of fear want you to put bigger locks on your door, buy guns, close yourself off. The eyes of love instead see all of us as one. It underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. But I'm exactly where I wanted to be because I realized I gotta commit my very being to this thing. I gotta, I gotta breathe it, I gotta eat it, I gotta sleep it. And until you get there, you'll never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you, the world is yours. The world is yours.
Hello and welcome back to Open Eyes. My name is Ira Robinson and I want to thank you guys for sticking around with us through that break there. I am here with my special guest, Bethany Robinson, and we wanted to bring to you guys tonight the topic of feminism and uh, actually more more uh, appropriately would be radical feminism or rad fem kind of uh, things that are going on and the craziness that's associated with it. And kind of women's rights in general, I guess you could say. Um, wouldn't that be correct? Yes. <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> Weird. Okay. That's okay. Um, so, yeah, we, we've we been dealing with a lot of really weird things over the past, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 years or so when it comes to the uh, feminist movement. There's kind of always been those radicals in the feminist movement, you know, ever since the 1960s when it really kind of started getting a foothold in things. And um, burning the bras. <laughs> do what? When people started burning the bras. Yeah. Which I have no problem with. Burn as many of the bras as you guys wish to. I, I have no issue with that. Free the free the twins. Um, so the uh, the fact is, though, that over the past maybe 10 to 15 maybe years, um, we have been seeing a really heavy increase in the amount of radical feminists that are out there. And they have really been pushing forward this agenda of completely eviscerating everything that is male, you know? And mm -hmm. to me, that kind of really, um, it, it's, it's angering to me because I, you know, I've never said that I've, that I'm a feminist. Okay. Although I might say that I support feminists. I'm not a feminist. I'm an equalist in, in everything. Men and women should be equal. There's no reason why they should not be. And to go really beyond that is nonsensical to me. Well, I heard a nice term the other day called that they are called humanist. And like, I was about ready to say that one too. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all human beings under every circumstance, we all should be equal because we all are equal. There's nothing different between any of us beyond the culture that we live in and the tenets that we follow. And that includes mm -hmm. the females and the males as well. Um, we, we are not the sum of our parts. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. We go way beyond that. Um, so let's let's kind of get into this a little bit here. I, I guess the first thing, the first area that I would like to touch on in regards to this is the fact that when it comes to the females and males of the species, for some stupid reason, it's considered to be unequal for uh, women to go topless like men can. Mm -hmm. And to me, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be able to. There, there really is no reason for it. I, I, yes, the, the, there are people that are out there that try to claim that the boobs are genitals, but they're not. No, they, they're not genitalia in any way, shape or form. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's not, it doesn't make any sense to me to have it covered just like it doesn't make any sense to me for males to have to cover mm -hmm. in the appropriate circumstances. Now, I'm not saying that everybody should be able to go topless wherever and whenever they please. There are times and places where it would be quote unquote appropriate to do so because of health reasons and so on and so forth. Okay. But when those things are not the case. There's no reason why a man should be able to not have a shirt on, but a woman has to have hers on. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on that? My biggest thoughts on it. I mean, I understand where some people come from. Well, I don't necessarily understand it, but I can see where they're coming from, but I don't agree with you them. don't get it at all uh, right <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i i can see why they say okay well it's immodest or it it's a genital because of the fact that they can be sexually arousing but so However, can a guy's boobs exactly <laughs> so can guys boobs. i mean every and, every bit of the body can be considered that exactly Everyone has certain erogenous zones and yeah. boobs just happen to be one of them. Yeah. And there we are, don't... and there are females out there that do not find any kind of pleasure in any way, shape or form by 
their boobs. Right. You know, and there are those that are out there uh, that are like that. Some people get off more by kissing the wrist than the yeah. boobs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and nobody's calling for cover the wrists, cover the wrists. <laughs> See, this is this is where the puritanical kind of mindset of America comes into play. We we have this this weird thing here in America that just drives me nuts, man. I hate it. I hate this part this portion of the average American mindset where we can show violence on television. We can show people getting killed, literally getting killed on television. I saw just, um, what was it last week? I think it was two weeks ago, somewhere around in there. There was a, a video of a guy who was being shot dead by the cops. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they were playing it on the news over and over and over again. Crack. Boom. Guy goes down. Okay. That right. guy, literally, you just watched him die. Okay. Right. You know, 20 years ago, people freaked the hell out over the fact that the uh, faces of death videos were out there and you could watch mm -hmm. people die in various different ways. But now you're seeing it on the news, you know, right. literally being able to watch it on the news and people are sitting their kids in front of these different news shows so that they can see this kind of stuff. They're sitting right. them down in front of video games that are that are violent like crazy. But then you you show them a boob in any way, shape or form and they freak out. Right, exactly. There is nothing inherently wrong about the body. It is a body. It is, everyone has one. Everyone looks the same. Well, I mean, not everyone looks the same, but everyone has the same parts for the most part, yeah. unless there's some health issue. Right. It's, there is no big deal. Right. And to make it a big deal is stupid. Yeah. It, it's absolutely stupid. It makes no sense whatsoever. And again, it's only because of that puritanical background that we started off with here in America. And and what year is this? That was that was the 1600s right. people. Well, 400 years later we're still dealing with this stupid crap. Come on. Right. It's also the fact that like they over-sexualize these things. Like yes. you see like okay, um the the movie just came out the Magic Mike. Yeah. You see these guys taking off their shirt in the commercial yet they sexualize women with everything else and they have no problem with it when it's a guy but when right. it, a woman is over sexualized it's like oh my god everybody freak the f out right exactly exactly it's it's nonsense it really is my my other biggest thing is just like because of this puritanical mindset and because of the fact that apparently boobs are wrong People can't just breastfeed their ch children in public, which is right. the whole point of boobs in the first place. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You and I talked a little bit about that last week on uh, Wednesday, I believe, when we were talking about uh, Target store. Um, or no, no, no. It was about two weeks ago when you were on the show. We were talking about Target stores and, and how no, they are Wednesday. they are now supporting um, women being able to breastfeed publicly in their stores and not be harassed by anybody for doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great move. I think that they, they did the right thing there. And I love how the knee jerk reaction from everybody is that now we have to freak out over target, having, having trophy on a t-shirt that they sell. So, right. you know, the, totally eliminate the, the step forward that they took by lambasting them for something that they sell, you know? Not right. freaking out, for instance, over the Fifty Shades of Grey crap that they sell. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Let, let's have that. But, you know, shake my head. Yeah. Anyway, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, to me, that that really, it, it's it's a it's a bipolar kind of a thing. You know, it's kind of that bipolar aspect of us as Americans in general that we have the capacity to allow our kids to see violence everywhere, but then have them accidentally see a mother feeding her child from her breast. Mm -hmm. And that's wrong. Right. That, that woman I, is a pervert. I also like, I saw the other day an article about Facebook and their um, picture like regulations. They, they, someone leaked the actual reporting 
statistics for them. And they specifically said that they will remove anything that has a female nipple, but male nipples are okay. Is that what the whole meme now about is about that uh, they're yeah. they're taking female pictures and replacing the the nipple with the male nipple and showing yeah. it? Okay, now I get the meme. <laughs> <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook, so <laughs> that's okay. That's that's pretty interesting though. Um, but that again shows that that weird uh, dichotomy that we have in our brains here. You go to some European countries and other countries and all that kind of stuff, and and I mean, your boobs are everywhere. You know, it's not right. a big deal. It's there's not people randomly going out and screwing in the streets because some woman has her boob out. Well, I also you know? have to say, too, I, I was in a forum the other day and they were talking about the whole free the boobies movement and um, <laughs> free the boobies saying, movement. <laughs> I love the free the boobies movement. Anyway, um, <laughs> there was somebody saying, oh, well, if they legalize it or whatever, there will be people all over the streets having their boobs out and I don't want to see that. Okay. Number one, there are already states that have it legalized, including Ohio. I don't see anyone with their shirt off ever. <laughs> so that's kind well, of Well Ohio's pretty cold. cold. Ohio's pretty cold as a general rule. So yeah. I can see why they don't generally go topless there. Like, I but you're right. Understand it to be like in the middle of summer like right now when it where it's like a hundred degrees out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. There are, uh, if I remember correctly, there are about 10, 10 different states. Maybe maybe it's up to about 12 or so states where it's legal now for women to be topless wherever it's appropriate for a man to yeah. be topless. Mm -hmm. That's the important distinction with the rule. Wherever it's appropriate for a guy to be topless, a woman can be topless in these mm -hmm. states. And I support them fully. I absolutely do. And it's not because I want to see boobs. It's because I want it to be equal. There's no reason right. why they should have it covered up if they don't want to. Right. And just because of the fact that boobs are exposed does not mean that vaginas and penises and everything like that should be exposed. Or are Indeed. going to be exposed. I just looked it up. Apparently Canada is topless uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all, <laughs> all of Canada. And you don't see people, again, randomly going out and, you know, boffing in the streets and, it, it, you know, mass hysteria everywhere. Cats and dogs living in sin and, you know, on and on and on. Well, I don't know. Everything's I didn't fun. hear about somebody in Alberta where they were uh, having a threesome in public at a rodeo or something like that. But <laughs> yeah, well, you're always going to find exceptions to the rules, though, right? I mean, right, exactly. that, that is not because toplessness is legal there. That's because those people were perverts. <laughs> we just wanted to have a little fun at the rodeo. Exactly. Exactly. So, she um, to ride at the rodeo, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so breastfeeding in public, I know that's one thing that you are a, a huge advocate of, and I, mm -hmm. I definitely support it as well. I mean, to me, there's no reason why it should have ever been a problem to begin with. I, I have actually tried to find kind of like the origins of that being a problem. And the only thing that I can really find is that it really does go back again to that, that puritanical Pure kind, of, kind of thing. Right. And, and that's the only reason why it's there. But the fact is that it, it is, it is the basis of us as human beings to mm -hmm. feed from the breast of our mother. I mean, yeah. it kind of started, I think, probably with the whole formula root movement yes. where the companies were starting to come out with the formula and they were trying to market it. So yeah. they made breastfeeding sound terrible. Right. Exactly. Which included making boobs as a sexual object a rather stigma. than a feeding object. Right. Exactly. You've got it exactly right. Um, there was a, a massive propaganda campaign that came out when uh, Gerber, I think it was Gerber that started off the uh, the uh, artificial formula kind of things. Um, when they came out with their propaganda, it was it was huge. I mean, it was a massive campaign and they were talking about uh, breast milk is is actually dangerous, that that it's not at all good for the child. And this is why we have polio and on and on and on, you know, and um mm -hmm. So, you know, do the, do the soy formula and do the, the fake formula and, and, uh, that will be better for your baby. Um, right. 
The fact is, though, that, you know, it is important, absolutely essential that the child should at least get some of the originating breast milk because of the colostrum, you know, if possible, those those first few feedings are really, really, really important for the overall health of the baby. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, even if you can't do it from that point forward, you should at least do your best to do it there. And I find right. it ironic that the CDC now is trying to say that the women should delay breastfeeding their children for as long as possible because it interferes with the vaccines. It makes right. the vaccines and that just ineffective. Makes me angry. I would rather wait for vaccines until after my child is done breastfeeding than wait to breastfeed until my child is done with their vaccines, considering the fact that they won't be able to breastfeed after a certain point because your boobs run out of milk. Yeah. 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 There, there's a, there's a point where too much is too much, you know? <laughs> well, I, I don't know how many people know this because I didn't know it before I became pregnant myself. When a breastfeeding mom or when a mom becomes pregnant and starts developing their milk after a certain point, if they don't continue breastfeeding, they run out of milk. So it, it if you stop breastfeeding or if you don't breastfeed at all, that child will never be able to breastfeed. Right. They, the, it dries up. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, and that's where, too, a lot of uh, the ideas of like wet nurses and that kind of thing developed from because the uh, the mothers didn't want to feed them themselves. So they would hire somebody to come in and breastfeed the child for them. With right. their milk, you know, so um, there were women who got paid very, very well, actually, for for being wet nurses. Um, mm -hmm. You still find that actually today where you can find people that will do that for you. Or um, you can go to places online where you can buy breast milk and have it donated and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy it like off of Craigslist and stuff, <laughs> which I don't know if I trust breast milk off of craigslist i, I don't think I yeah would, uh... they they have done some studies on the um kind of like online donation things and they have found that a lot of them are very very dangerous because of the fact that they can have all kinds of stds and everything because they aren't screened properly right and drugs in the system when the mother is giving the milk and all that kind of stuff yep different prescriptions that all gets into there so yep so let me get into something else here. I, I ran across a, a couple of things here that I'd like to get your thoughts on. Um, there are women out there, the rad femmes, <laughs> who declare that all heterosexual sex is rape. What? Yeah. There was Whoa. a, yeah, the, the, it's a big thing. Um, let me see here. I'm going to, I'm trying to find the exact words here. <laughs> Sorry. I got to go through my tablet. Um, okay. So there is a, there is a, a couple of sites that are out there that are kind of dedicated to the, the, um, you know, the rad femme movement. Uh, one of them was started by the late Andrea Dworkin, um, she was a, a radical feminist, lesbian, anti-pornography activist and author. And she basically is the um, sort of origination of the rad femme movement. OK. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, she was married twice before she passed away and uh, both times were to men. Her second husband considers himself gay and is also a rad femme. But uh, her husband is is the managing editor of the AARP's magazine. So just throwing that interesting thing out. Anyway, she wrote a book that's kind of become the um, the touch point for a lot of the radical feminist movement. And uh, the book is called Intercourse. And in the uh, in the book, she argues that in our patriarchal or male dominated society, all heterosex is really all heterosexual sex is really rape and not that different from pornography in that it's coercive and degrading to women. Sexual penetration of vagina by penis may, by its very nature, doom women to inferiority and submission and may be immune to reform. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Apparently, the only sex she's ever had was non-orgasmic missionary position only for the 
cause of having children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she said intercourse is the very means through which men oppress us from which we are not allowed to escape. Uh, first intercourse is never sex for women. Sex for men is the unilateral penetration of their penis into a woman or anything else replacing and symbolizing the female orifice, whether she thinks that she wants it or not, which is the definition of rape that he will do it anyways. And that he uses her and treats her as a receptacle in all circumstances. Men use women as useful objects and instruments for penetration and women are dehumanized by this act. It is an act of violence. Intercourse is inherently harmful to women and intentionally so because it causes pregnancy in women. Has she ever thought about the fact that some women actually like to be pregnant and like to have a woman, a, a regular, like, not regular, but a, a childbearing kind of life? <laughs> well, she goes into that, actually. Um, let me see here. I, I thought <laughs> I had it copied onto here because I thought you might bring that point up. Um <laughs> I also have to say, again, this woman has never had an orgasm through a penis in her life, apparently. <laughs> okay, well, here, I got, I got a couple others here. Um, the purpose of men enforcing inter intercourse regularly, as in more than once a month, onto women is because it's the surest way to cause pregnancy and force childbearing against our will and thereby gain control over our reproductive powers. Reproductive harms of penis and vagina range from pregnancy to abortion, having to take invasive or to toxic contraception, giving birth, forced childbearing and rearing, and all of the complications that go with them, which may lead up to severe physical and emotional damage, disability, destitution, illness, or death. If we compare this to even the crappiest online definition of violence, behavior involving physical force intended to hurt, damage, or kill someone or something. Penis and vagina is a man mounting on a woman to thrust at large, a large member of himself into her most intimate parts, often forcing her to be entirely naked, banging himself against her with his whole weight of his body and hips, shaking her like he would stuff a corpse, then using her insides as a receptacle for his penile dejection. How is this a normal, civilized, respectful way to treat anyone? I'm sorry for the explicit picture, but this is what it is, and it is absolutely revolting and violating. <laughs> <laughs> so this person is not i i would argue that they aren't even a feminist because at that point they are arguing the fact that a woman can't have an orgasm and the fact that women cannot make their own decisions whether or not they want to have sex right but see the the they go with the idea Here's here's where it is. The fact that we may not immediately feel raped doesn't mean that it's not raped, ob uh, rape, objectively speaking. Our subjective feelings or thoughts may be colonized by men's perspectives. It's because we have been uh, propagandized by the male perspective for so long that we think that we enjoy intercourse. I enjoy intercourse. <laughs> no. <sighs> Apparently you've been propagandized by males. Um, so, 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 I mean, what do you, what do you think about this kind of, of radical feminism? I mean, this is, this is pretty extreme, right? Yeah. I, I have to argue as far as radical feminism, especially in this case, that they aren't arguing for women. No, they really they're arguing aren't. against. I mean, if anything, they are trying to disempower women completely. Right. Completely disempower women. I mean, that's exactly. how I look at it. I mean, I can make decisions for myself whether or not I feel like a having sex is rape. <laughs> <laughs> or the fact that I would like to have children. Or the fact that I want to feel empowered by having sex with my partner. <laughs> I mean, this is the same kind of, of mindset or thinking that says that uh, in order for a woman to protect herself from a potential rapist, she should urinate on herself to 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 make him be turned off. Mm. That's supposed to be your defense is pissing on yourself. You know, uh, come on, not fight back for yourself, not stand up for yourself, not maybe actually attack the attacker back. You know, to right. get him off of you, maybe not carry a weapon or a gun or anything along those lines. No, you're supposed to pee on yourself. Come on. Right. Come on. Really? 
are we are we are we treating our our women that way you know is that really what the what it comes down to that's not feminist I mean, to to me it's saying that because of the fact that we're a woman that we can't protect ourselves yeah yeah um i i've i've got a couple of other things here for you that that uh, kind of go into this this is uh something that i ran across that that goes into the um topics that most radical feminists speak about so like one of them is you uh, don't teach girls how to avoid rape instead you teach men not to rape okay but the thing is that i know for, i for one would never rape somebody you know, I, I've never done it. I never will. The, the vast majority women, of men out there wouldn't do it. You know, we already that, know perfectly well not to rape. <laughs> that whole mindset makes me so angry. The rape culture people, thing. A lot of people use that argument against abortion because, oh, well, if it's a rape baby, maybe the people shouldn't just rape or should just not rape. Okay. Well, rape still happens whether or not people tell them not to rape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, uh, as, according to statistics that I found, um, it's about four to six percent of men who do commit sexual assaults. OK, mm -hmm. and they're not going to be like changed by any kind of anti rape education because they don't give a crap about what society thinks about them. They're sociopaths and they're sexual predators. OK. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to care whether or not somebody teaches them not to rape. They're going to rape. They're a rapist. That's that's what it comes down to. But it's a, it's a small percentage of of people who are that way. OK. I also have to say in regards to this whole rape uh, culture perspective thing that we're talking about, I do have to say as far as the people that say because i've heard this argument so many times that um when it comes to people saying that oh i was raped and it's there's so many apparently false rape cases when in fact the amount of actual false rape cases that there are is about two to three percent yeah yeah and the fact that 92 percent of rapists get away and aren't prosecuted at all is a horribly staggering statistic yeah yeah absolutely teaching women to defend themselves or take precautions against sexual uh, assault amounts to victim blaming mm -hmm. that's what they claim they say that a woman should be able to walk stark naked down main street and not be raped she should have the right to wear exactly what she feels like and no matter how sexy or revealing and not be raped she should have the right to drink herself, to, you know, completely into a stupor and not be raped. And she should have the right to go over wherever she wants, even down the darkest alley in the dead of night and not be raped. Now, here's the problem with that. There are no such rights. <laughs> right. I mean, I say, yes, we should be able to do that. But at the same time, that's not reality. Well, the, the the thing is, okay, listen, you're, you're talking to somebody who was raped. Okay. I was raped myself. I was raped because I didn't take precautions mm -hmm. because I didn't know how to defend myself because I didn't know how to fight back. And I didn't know what to do to look around myself and be aware of things that are going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So was it my fault? No, but to, to try to say that you have the right to walk naked down the street or the right not to be prepared and on and on and on is, is dumb. It, you right. don't have that right. There is no such right. You have, you right. have inalienable rights that are given to you by the creator, but that certainly ain't one of them. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? You have the right to be precautious, you, you know, cautious. You have the right to take precautions, to be prepared for whatever it is that may come along and know that you're going to be capable of defending yourself no matter what comes along. That's right. what you have the right to do. And you have the right to react to whatever happens to you in the way that you wish to react. It's just a matter of common sense. You know, it's it's like, um. I, I don't know. It's like it's like going to a river 
or going to to like let's let's say in a desert. Okay, you go into like the the big areas, the channels where water goes through in a flash flood, right? Right. You can stand in one of those arroyos and and wait for the water to come, and then as the water is coming on top of you and piling over you, and you're starting to drown, you say this is the water's fault. No, it wasn't the water's fault. It was your fault for standing there. <laughs> well, it's kind of like the uh, the the case where the baby is sitting in the crib and they throw a flashbang grenade in it, yes. and apparently it's the baby's fault. It's the baby's fault. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know. It's just you know the the mindset that some of these things really really have. It's it's crazy. You know, um, they they teach people. They, they teach women to be in a constant state of fear of men, you know, and this is this is really, I think, the biggest tool of this whole rape culture mentality is mm-hmm. that fear aspect. They demonize literally half of the society that we live in. And then mm-hmm. they turn the rest of the people into these quaking, shaking victims who flinch at every single male shaped shadow that happens to come along. Exactly. And, and it's just, they say, they say, oh, well, not all men are rapists, but then they turn around and do this kind of stuff and they foment mistrust in all men, you know, no matter if they're your father, your brother, your, your son, husband, no matter what they, they are given this state of fear. Exactly. Just the whole rape culture and victim blaming is just absolutely ridiculous to me. The fact that you think that a person is raping you just by looking at you wrong or farting next to you or having their legs manspreaded. <laughs> yes. Just, <laughs> yes. Thank you. You brought up not, a couple of those. Yes. He, he is not penetrating you. He is not sexually assaulting you. That is not rape. And to say that it is, is insulting to every person that has ever been raped. Yes, it absolutely is from somebody that, again, you know, I'm just being honest with people. I don't, I don't hide that aspect of my life in any way, shape or form. I'm very open about it because I think that it's important for people to learn lessons, you know, um, I don't, I don't go around playing the victim in any way. And I wasn't completely devastated by it either. And I, I understand. Okay. Well, let let me just say this in relation to what you were saying there before I, before I sidetrack myself too much. Um, (laughs) the, uh, the fact is that, that, uh, that rape that took place, it was a very horrific thing. And I will (laughs) say flat out, having a wife who can tend to be very gassy, her passing (laughs) gas is not raping me. I know what rape is from firsthand experience. And I hope to God, you people out there who try to claim that somebody farting around you is rape, never actually experience what true rape is. Right. Exactly. Okay. Just, just hope that you never do. Okay. And I'm being very genuine with that. I'm not trying to be sarcastic or anything. Go with your delusions, please. Don't ever experience it for yourself because it really is a horrific thing. Okay. Now, one other aspect of of this rape culture that is around is the idea that that being raped is something completely devastating. Okay. Uh That your life is completely ruined if you get raped. Now, again, from the perspective of somebody who's experienced it. Okay. It did not devastate my life. And I don't look back on the things that occurred to me and think to myself, oh, God, my life is ruined because of that experience. There Mm -hmm. are those that are out there that do experience that. And I'm not trying to downplay that at all, but it is possible to get past rape. It's possible to live beyond rape. That also kind of goes along with the puritanical and the virginal. Oh, well, if you want to be a real woman you have to be a virgin that kind of thinking or if you've had sex with more than one or two men you're a whore or that kind of thing i think that kind of goes along with why especially women are so devastated when it happens yeah i think so too and and i i will say too that one aspect of this too 
that I, I guess I'd like to make clear is that when it comes to this whole radical feminism, they will maybe, maybe acknowledge male rape, but it's very, very mm -hmm. rare. It's yeah. it's about as rare as finding a, a, a 25 leaf clover <laughs> when you're not around a nuclear power plant. Okay. Right. But the fact is that, that, you know, a large amount of the male population have experienced the same thing that women have experienced. Right. And in and fact, I will say actually from, from my perspective, from what I've seen for a man to be raped, it's actually uh, an even more psychologically damaging process than it is for a lot of women that are out there. So just, just saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not again trying to downplay, but I'm just saying, you know, for, for a guy to be raped, um, you know, for women, when women, uh, when a woman is raped, they, they have at least some support system that's there in mm -hmm. place. Guys don't have that. We don't have right. that at all. We cannot tell another guy as a general rule. Hey, by the way, I was raped, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Whereas so a woman can, can, say, can oh, at least. Not, it's not possible for you to be raped because exactly. men are sexual creatures. Exactly. Thank you very much. That's exactly what is claimed by 90% of the people that are out there. And it drives me nuts, you know? Because it's the opposite I, I, of the truth. The other thing is with like just general domestic abuse and sexual violence and everything with women, we have shelters where we can get away. Can't do and that as a there's guy. many, many homeless uh, shelters and things like that towards women, but they don't have that for men. No, absolutely not. I know for me, it, it <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, when I was in a very abusive relationship, which was one of my wives, um, I had to rely on somebody else to get me out of the situation because there was no shelter for me to go to. There was right. no way that I could escape. You know, it was literally I was there or I wasn't going to be anywhere, you know, because I had nowhere to go. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. The the there are structures, there is a a support system that's put in place for women, but you don't see that for guys. And, and on the same coin as sorry, on the same coin as the women getting raped is different from men being raped because men can't be raped because they're sexual creatures. They also apparently can't be abused because women are weaker than men. Yeah, and yeah. that's I think a lot of the reason why they don't have the domestic violence shelters for men is because people believe that because of the fact that they are stronger quote unquote they can deal with the fact that they're being abused and i'm not a weak guy but i know a lot of women who are a lot stronger than me i'll just say that <laughs> so but you know you're you're right the it, it's it's sad to me to see that that something that could be a point of equality is being used as a point of division. Exactly. Because we could come together with it and say, by the way, Hey, both of us, both sexes experience this kind of thing. We both know and understand what each other are going through. Mm -hmm. And it's sad to me that it's being used as a point of division instead. So yeah. Um, what do you think? Uh, we've got a few minutes left here <clears throat> and, and I want to, change the topic a little bit, but not, not much. We're, we're going to keep talking about this uh, type of thing. A lesbian couple in Ithaca, New York are raising their child to be genderless. Okay. They refuse to call him a boy or a girl and allow the, the child to choose his gender uh, identity during the teenage years. And apparently they're not alone. Most people, you know, there, there are a lot of people that are out there that, do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, for this couple in particular, they say, uh, they, they call, uh, they call their child a boy chick, um, <laughs> which is weird. And, and they identify him as a self-identified queer identified male partnered monogamist type of situation. They describe their boy chick uh, as a male assigned at birth and so far apparently comfortable with that assignment while currently able bodied, congenitally hypothyroid, co sleeper, former breastfed toddler, elimination communication graduate, sling baby, and early walker, trial and terror, 
cliched light of life and impetus for their being, the odds are good that they, that he will be the most privileged of persons, which is a middle-class, able-bodied, cisgender, straight white male. Mm -hmm. My God, that is a lot to get out. Are we supposed to do that kind of thing now when it comes to describing our child or ourselves? Are we supposed to go through this whole litany of bullshit every time that we want to say, I'm either a guy or a girl? Right, apparently. <laughs> I know personally, I... No matter what gender of child I have, because I don't know what the gender is yet. I won't know for another month or so. But no matter what the gender is, I don't want my child to be really exposed or called by the gender stereotypes. Like, I don't want people to say, oh, well, boys will be boys or have the like, oh, you're such a little pretty princess, that kind yeah, of thing. I don't disagree with that. <laughs> but Because I know a lot I'm of guys that are great with dolls, you know. <laughs> right. I, I also, I'm not doing the, oh, well, your child doesn't have a gender because yeah. they are born with a gender. It, yeah. It's just how it works. Whether they but, identify with that one or not, that's that's a totally okay. different subject. But And that's something, for, in my opinion, that they can decide when they're older and they have a more developed mind. And, and, you know, just based upon the fact that they have a pee pee or a hoo ha, that, you know, they can be called one or the other for at right. least that brief period of time. Exactly. Well, listen, we're out of time. Uh, I want to give you, uh, like, maybe just a few seconds here to get out any kind of final thoughts that you have. Well, I guess my final thoughts is just kind of, you know, we're all human. We all have the same soul, we all have the same kind of mindset. I mean, we're all human. So no matter what gender or skin color or race or sexuality that you have, we're all human and we all share the same consciousness and we're all here for the same reason. Absolutely. I could not agree more. So guys, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode tonight. I know that I really enjoyed bringing it to you. Um, if you want to go to the show notes for this show, you can go to open eyes network dot com forward slash o e one two six if you want to send me an email you can send it to feedback at openeyesnetwork.com and i welcome anything and everything that you guys have to say if you want to go to my facebook or twitter pages those are at um open eyes network on both of those platforms and uh, i'm not sure what the topic is going to be on wednesday yet but pay attention to my social feeds because i will make sure to mention it to you uh, again open eyes network on both uh, twitter and facebook so until next time keep safe out there and have fun and thank you as always for listening The leader in talk radio on the internet, right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up 
to 50% on washer and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 